Hey, aspiring future environmental engineering students. So you're probably wondering what classes should you take in order to like become a successful environmental engineer? Either you're going back to school or you're just wanting to start this whole journey. You know, what knowledge do I need to know or what classes should I take? How do I, you know, be one step ahead of my peers to gain that sort of knowledge, gain that sort of upper hand to get that job? So really in this video, I want to share with you what classes you should take in order to become a successful environmental engineer. Now before we begin though, I want to give like a quick disclaimer. So I graduated back in 2016 with my bachelor's in chemistry. I graduated with my master's in environmental engineering back in 2017. At the time of this recording, it is October 2020. So I graduated three years ago. That means I don't know what information that I give to you today will be relevant in the future. So, you know, things have changed. The school system might change later in the future. Although I highly doubt that it will happen anytime soon. Still, things can change. So that being said, what I am saying right now, today, as of October 2020, it might be irrelevant or outdated if you're watching this, you know, later in the future. Okay, so that was just a quick warning. Now let's go ahead and start the video. Alright, so these are the classes that I took or I wish I had taken to get to where I am today. So I'm currently working as an environmental engineer. I'm still relatively new to this field. It's been about almost two years, but hey, I still have a job, so this is just advice to people who are just starting to look into this field. The first one is like pretty obvious. It is your GE classes, your prerequisite classes that you have to take in order to graduate from your engineering program. I know this is like a pretty generic and like easy to understand, like a no-brainer answer, but I mean, you have to take your classes. You gotta take these classes in order to graduate. So some of these GE classes or your prerequisite classes could be including like, you know, one class of biology or one class of chemistry, or history or whatever. Basically, whatever you need to take in order to graduate from your university. I mean, just take these classes and get out of there, you know. Just graduate as fast as you can because the longer you stick in university, the more you're going to be paying for school and all that stuff. Don't linger on and like try to take more classes thinking that you'll be more well-rounded or like all these things. Don't waste your time, okay? Just take what you need and get out. Now the next class is something like an AutoCAD class or like some computer design class. Those basic designing classes that you would typically see when you think of like an engineer. Now for my program, environmental engineering is a subcategory of civil engineering. And when you think of civil engineers, you think of like people who design bridges or power plants or those kind of things. So because environmental engineers are underneath this sort of bigger subsection, this civil engineers, then you should be learning what civil engineers learn too. So that means you should also take like AutoCAD or SOLIDWORKS or something like that. These sort of classes, like these are the bare backbones, like the foundation to becoming a successful uh, engineer. And personally for me, I did not take these classes. I came from a chemistry major, so I took lots of lab classes. My classes were very heavy on like science and like labs, so I didn't have time or even know I was going to go into that field of environmental engineering until after I graduated with my bachelor's. So I'm like pretty far behind. I actually don't even have these skills, but if you want to become successful, or if you want to become flexible in the sort of field of engineering, whether it be like even after you graduate, you can still go towards civil engineering or go towards environmental engineering. You have that skill. You have these classes, you have these backgrounds that you can jump into because you know, you're flexible. So please do take these classes because it will help you far out in the future. The next one is some sort of GIS class. So as an environmental engineer, you're going to be looking at a lot of maps. It doesn't mean you're going to be like working on maps all day, but you should still have some sort of familiarity with how GIS works. Whether your job requires it or not, it's just good to know. I know towards like environmental science, they might make you go out towards like wildlife and like maybe climb these mountains or something. It's really interesting, but you need to know how like these layers work. And it gets way more complicated if you're looking at like hydrology and like topography and all that stuff. So, I mean, you're not going to be doing that. Hopefully, <laughs> depending on how complicated your line of work is, you might not be doing that. But it's just, again, good to have. The next tip for classes is that you should take the bare minimum of physics and math. So I know as prerequisite classes, you have to take like physics, even as like my chemistry major and even to environmental engineering, I had to take like one whole year of physics. I had to take some advanced math classes, but I don't do any of that for my line of work. To me, it was a waste of time. So you don't need to go like full all in taking these super advanced, complicated 
science classes because you're honestly not going to use them in your work. All that is really just to like show that you can take these classes and that you can like pass them but you won't be using it practically for like once you graduate. So please just take the bare minimum that you need to graduate. Like don't spend so much time trying to impress your friends or trying to like achieve the highest grade. You know just take your class and get out. Just take what you need and get out. Me not taking these classes that's why I was able to graduate in like one year. I'm not trying to go two full years creating a thesis and like taking all these extra classes when I don't need to. The longer I'm there at school, the more I have to pay, the more stressed out I'll be, so I didn't want to do any of that. I just took it, went out. And lastly, in order to become a successful environmental engineer once you graduate, take those heavily focused classes. What I mean by that is like, if you're interested in water or you're interested in air, take those classes. Take what you plan on graduating with or working towards that field, take those classes, that way you can save time, get the knowledge. So for example, if you plan on working in like a wastewater treatment plant, take those wastewater treatment plant classes. Take like the water design classes, take all these water focused classes. Don't take like the air or like the climate change or other things if you're not planning to use that knowledge. Yes, you'll need to be sort of well balanced and you'll need to take maybe one or two of them, but don't focus so much of your entire like four years of bachelor's or two years of master's towards taking all these classes when, again, you're not going to use so much of those skills or use that knowledge once you get a job. So for example, when I was still in school, I took like one class of fuel cell fundamentals, like one class of climate change, one class of air, but I planned on working towards like the water field, even though I'm currently not right now, but I plan on working in a wastewater treatment plant. So that means I took like four or five classes towards water, on how to treat water, all that knowledge on water. I didn't waste my time working on air or like solid waste or urban planning or anything like that because I plan on working in the water treatment field. So if you plan on working in one specific field, aim for that. Don't waste your time again taking other classes that you know that you won't be using. Alright, so I hope this helps you guys in narrowing down what classes you need to take. I hope that this really like makes you focus on like what you want to become once you graduate. So again, you're not trying to Take the whole broad spectrum of trying to be a perfect engineer who knows everything in every single field. You want to just narrow down that specific specialty. And honestly, I know it's hard. Like I know you're not going to be doing well in every single class. So I know it might be scary to just jump in or you might be lost still determining whether or not this field is for you. Hopefully this helps you in narrowing down what you need to take and trying to see whether or not you might be even like compatible with these classes. Because if you fail a class, then it's just gonna hold you back for a few more semesters and no one wants that. Yeah, okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.